Hello people, David here and welcome to BTEC. Now you know 2018 has been a bit of a crazy year for me. I only started working here at BTEC back in February. I started off as a cameraman for Ian and my first job was covering the UK launch of the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. Sadly Ian didn't stay at BTEC that long and by the time the P20 series was released in March, well we were both supposed to cover that event but Ian couldn't make it to Paris. So I had to step in and I've been doing it ever since. You're watching BTEC. My name's David Warman and I was thrilled to be at the launch of the Huawei P20, P20 Lite and P20 Pro in Paris. As you can probably tell from that footage, I did find it a little bit hard at first, but thanks to a combination of amazing comments from you guys, hard work and good advice from people like Basil, who I do still see from time to time at these events. If you're wondering where Basil went, well, he has his own channel now. It's called Basil Knows and it's about the ethics of smartphone technology. Go and check him out. As you know, he's well worth a watch. Smartphone addiction is something that we really need to be taking seriously. Anyway, so in this video, I'm gonna go through my favorite phones that I've used in 2018. So it's not gonna be like a phone of the year awards show. It's just gonna be my personal favorites that I've used since I started at VTEC. I think it's fair to say that you could call 2018 the year of the smartphone camera. We've seen some amazing technological advancements when it comes to smartphone photography. And the first release of the year was the Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. Now this has to make my list because of its gorgeous looks, amazing screen, which is still one of the best on a smartphone today. And for its camera tech, that switchable aperture between f1.5 and f2.4. Now I think it might have been quite a risk for Samsung to actually include a movable aperture in their smartphone because I think it would be quite hard to market that. It will come across quite gimmicky to a lot of people. Unless you're familiar with photography, a movable aperture doesn't sound too exciting and it's not exactly easy to explain the benefits of it either. But I guess that the results that you get from the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus in low light and in good conditions speak for themselves. The powerful Exynos 9810 chipset also allows the S9 and S9 Plus to shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second and the chipped imaging sensor lets it shoot 960 frames per second super slow motion. It's just a beautiful and well built solid device. Other than the kind of slow system updates that you get from Samsung, there's very little to complain about the S9 and the S9 Plus. But Huawei wanted to go one better. So they released the P20 Pro. Now I think I always have a soft spot for the P20 Pro and that's just because it was the first event that I covered and the first time that I had to introduce an episode of BTEC. I remember wandering around Paris with this amazing smartphone camera, taking pictures in almost total darkness and have them come out sharp and clean. I was really amazed by it. Rocking a new Kirin 970 with its dedicated AI processor, a huge 4,000 mAh battery and a triple set of Leica lenses across the back. Again, Huawei are not known for being generous with their software updates, but if that's something that doesn't bother you, then both of these phones come highly recommended. Which brings me to Nokia, because if you are the type that does care about software updates and having your device supported for more than just one year, or even less than that in some cases, then you should be looking in this direction. All of the smartphone releases this year from Nokia are involved with the Android One program, which means as well as being among the first to receive new updates, these handsets are guaranteed to have three years of security patches and two years of system updates, making them one of the most secure brands that you can buy at the moment. But what I loved about the Nokia phones this year is the rock solid build quality. One of my favorite phones of this year is the Nokia 7 Plus. A unibody design, machined from 6000 series aluminium. It's not messing about with any glass on the back or anything like that. Instead, it's got a soft textured back. Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, which I'm convinced is far more resistant to scratches than Gorilla Glass 5 is. It's got a beautiful anodized copper finish to the frame and accents around the camera and fingerprint scanner. Compared to most of the consumer smartphones on the market at the moment, this thing is built like a tank. Okay, the water and dust resistant rating is only IP54, meaning that it's merely splash proof. But battery life is excellent and the Zeiss lenses give great results when taking pictures. 
This is a no nonsense phone for people who just want a reliable, nice looking handset that they can watch a bit of YouTube on and take a nice picture from time to time. I found Wi-Fi reception and signal strength on this thing to be very good as well. I find that the metal body phones do tend to be able to carry the signal strength a little bit better. I know that for sure with Bluetooth. You see, my headphones can go a little bit further away from the phone before they cut out. I noticed this with the Nokia and with the Samsung A6, which is also a metal body phone. I do wish someone would make a unibody flagship phone again. The Nokia 7 Plus is a great buy at £349. You're getting longevity both with the software and with the build quality. One of my favourite phones that I've tested. Before we go on, I want to say a big thank you to Direct Mobiles. They have a great selection of the latest phones and over 23 years of award winning customer service. It is in no doubt a great place to go and get your new phone. Check in the video description below for a link to their deals or search directmobiles.co.uk. My next favourite phone of 2018 might be a little bit controversial, but I think it's one of the most underrated phones that we saw this year. And that's the HTC U12 Plus. This is a quirky little device, but unfortunately when it was released, the software wasn't exactly ready, shall we say. The capacitive buttons and the edge function, which allowed you to squeeze or tap on the sides of the phone to control certain functions. But when it was launched, it seemed to be way too sensitive. And I found it very power intensive as well draining the battery unnecessarily and activating seemingly by itself almost all of the time. It got to the point that I had to switch it off because it was really making the phone almost unusable. But a few weeks later, HTC sent through an update which totally solved all of the problems. But by then, a lot of damage had been done. Most reviewers had already destroyed the reputation of HTC's new flagship. But as it stands now, this is a good phone with original features and a good enough battery and still one of the best dual lens camera systems available is actually dual lenses on the front and the back, beautifully stabilized 4K footage and great low light performance. There's also great customization options with this software. If you want something quirky that you can really customize and make your own, then have a look at the HTC U12 Plus. In the second half of the year, the lower end of the market really started to heat up. We're getting unbelievably cheap phones now that are packed with features and excellent camera tech. I think the Honor 8X is definitely worth a mention because it's very cheap, £230, and for that you get an AI-powered smartphone. And it's been improved over the AI systems that were presented to us with the Honor 10 and even the P20 and the P20 Pro. On top of that, it looks great in this red color. The Mate 20 Lite is pretty much Huawei's version of this phone. It's very similar, but there are some minor differences in the camera app. You probably do get a better camera with the Mate 20, but I think it's a really good looking device with great battery life a good looking screen. It's a great deal for the price, I think. And finally, the last quarter of 2018, Android 9 Pie hits the scene and we see the first phones that start using processor cores built on a seven nanometer architecture. Now this is significant because both of these new features mean that amongst other things, vastly improved battery life. And all of the phones that I've used with Android 9 have had no problems in getting me through the day. That includes the Nokia 7.1, the Google Pixel 3, and the OnePlus 6T. The Sony Xperia XZ3 is another Android 9 phone that I wanted to mention, and not just because of its operating system, but because for me, it's the best looking phone of 2018. A gorgeous Bravia powered OLED display that curves on all sides, super premium build and finish. They even put a notch on its backside to really rub it in. And unlike the XZ2 and the XZ2 Compact that we saw from Sony earlier in the year, the XZ3 has much smoother performance and very rarely gets hot, even when shooting video at 4K with HDR. This was to me a major problem with the XZ2. I found that it got hot more or less straight away, especially the smaller XZ2 Compact, which means the processor would be throttling and slowing down what should be a fast phone. So of all the top phones of the moment, things like the iPhone XS and XR, the Google Pixel 3, the Note 9, and of course, Huawei's Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro. Well, my favorite phone of 2018, unsurprisingly, is the Mate 20 Pro. Overall, you really can't fault this device. Sure, there are some issues with the video quality in low light, but that is the only weak part of this phone. Ironically, the camera turns out to be the only part of this phone that has issues. Everything else about this phone is well thought out and convenient. Unlocking the phone is a cinch and so easy, sometimes you can forget that there's even security on the phone. 
the MUI 9 is excellent. I love using the swipe gestures. The screen is great. Battery life is incredible. It's fast. I've never seen it slow down and I've never even felt it get warm. And this is one of the only phones that I've tested this year that will switch between my two personal home broadbands without any issues. Almost every other phone apart from say the Pixel 3 XL and the OnePlus 6T would always lose signal first before switching to the other network. And guess which phone this year I found worse for this kind of Wi-Fi performance? Yep, you guessed it. This thing drops out first and it won't even connect to my second network most of the time. It was the same with the iPhone X, but I was certain that with the iPhone XS, they would have fixed this problem. But no, it's exactly the same. It's such a shame because the iPhone XS is an amazing smartphone. I mean, just look at that beautiful OLED screen, stainless steel construction. But as an actual phone, it's probably the worst of the bunch. My dad always complains when I speak to him on an iPhone, He's always moaning about how he can't hear me properly and speak into the phone. Anyway, that's the truth about the iPhone. Look out for my full review, which I'm in the middle of now, because it's not all bad. Anyway, that's it from me. I can only give you my opinion on phones that I've tested. If I've missed anything that you think should be in this list, it's probably because I haven't tested it. There's only one of me, you know. Hey, I would really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the subscribe button, double tap the notification bells, and smash that like button for me. I'm David Wildman, and this was BTECT.